Greetings and welcome to the Market Research Event 2010 in San Diego. This is uh, day two, day one of the official actual conference general program session. And I'm here with Tim Keogh of Pershing. Thanks for joining us, Tim. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Glad to be here. Can you tell us a little bit about we've been through now? Were you here yesterday? I was here, yes. Okay. What between yesterday and today stood out to you about the event? Uh, well, first, I think it's extremely well organized. Uh, and I think it's also been very innovative. I, I think using the, the little uh, mingle sticks, uh, the communications prior to the ability to actually do networking, uh, and sending out the PowerPoints, the presentations prior to uh, the conference, I think, was, is brilliant because it allows you to kind of go see and, and better choose what presentations you want to go see. So I think that was, uh, that was really uh, beneficial. Of the sessions you've attended, were there any surprises? Was there uh, anything that really got your noodle going? I think uh, Michael Chung really got my noodle going yesterday. Uh, quite, the, quite the presentation in terms of how technology impacts us uh, more than we know every day. Uh, and as somebody who has two daughters in college, that really resonated in terms of you know, the days of, of the CDs and the LPs that we're all used to. They have no idea. Um, and I think this morning when somebody was asking me, they were talking about an example of telephones and cell phones and what do you want. I said, well, I know what I want. I want a phone that I can use to talk to somebody. But if you ask my daughter, they don't talk to people on the phone. They could care less if it actually even had a speaker. As long as they can text and send pictures, they're good. So I think that really resonates in terms of the future and where we're going with things. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, when, is this your first time at the market research event, or have you been before? I haven't been in a year or two, so it's the first time back. Why did you come back? Uh, I think it came back because my, my focus at the firm is really starting to take more of a research process and kind of understanding what other people are doing in the world of customer experience. Um, we are a B2B, a business-to-business -business firm, and, uh, and often in this space, right, we like to think of ourselves as the stepchild. So the B2C folks are the ones who really do a lot of the research in the market, and if you want to go learn how to do what's being done, you really have to go follow the folks who are in the B2C market. Well, the B2B is, is I think, uh, as you pointed out, a stepchild, un, unexploited and completely underappreciated, but are also very high value, high margin area to be doing research in. Um, any thoughts on that? Well, I, I think, well, that's why I'm here. Uh, so I think it's important for, for most of the B2B organizations are kind of uh, have been doing it for a long time, but I think it's been it's gone unnoticed. And and for example, when you're doing research in call centers, a call center is a call center is a car, call center, regardless if it's B2B or B2C. So a lot of the data that's out there is applicable to the B2B environment. We just haven't been really picking up on it as best as we should. You've presented this year at the event. Can you tell us a little bit about your presentation? Um, sure. Uh, I, I know that what we called it in, in, the, uh, in the brochure is probably should have been titled differently. What I call uh, for us, it was VOC, Voice of the Customer, um, 0 to 60 in 18 months. Mm -hmm. So for us, we started out at a particular point where, where we really didn't have as good a focus on Voice of the Customer as we should. So we realized that and decided that we needed to make it a, a firm-wide effort and we needed to do it very quickly. So we put together a, a process, essentially, after getting the, your, the senior leader buy-in, we created a committee consisting of folks from across the firm. And through that committee process, it allowed us to really drive the very rapid adoption of the program and the policies and the procedures uh, and the technology that we needed into the firm, across the firm, at all levels of the firm, because we had folks literally from all different aspects of the firm involved in it from, from the get-go. You had a lot of stakeholders who's, uh, who needed to be influenced. They needed to be persuaded along the way as well, I imagine. Didn't, um, didn't really take, it. yeah, it didn't take a lot of persuasion. We, we knew w yeah. that we were kind of behind the eight ball in the process, okay. uh, and we wanted to stand it up. But what we also knew is that this shouldn't be 
a voice to the customer program that's used by just one department. It needed to be used by multiple types of folks within the firms, and they needed to be able to use the data the way they needed to use the data um, and have it at their fingertips. So if you have an account manager who needs to look at customer satisfaction data, they need to look at it from the customer's perspective. Mm -hmm. if, you, or if you're a customer service manager, you need to look at it in terms of how well are your associates doing. Right. So two different uses of the same data, um, and you, have, you need to kind of pull that together very quickly and in a way that folks have easy access to it, uh -huh. and, and they can use it without me having to send them a report they can go get it themselves and cut and slice and dice. So the, the tool itself and the way it's communicated out is incredibly flexible is what I'm gathering from what It is, saying. and it's, it's the, really the cornerstone of being able to act on customer feedback uh, firm-wide. Mm -hmm. And also being able to present the data to your audience to disparate audiences, various audiences with different agendas in a way that they can... A absolutely they can, correct, yeah. absolutely. What's next? What's next for us, I think, is really to no more technology. We think we're pretty happy with what we have. For us, the focus really is now, let's get better at acting on the data. We feel pretty good about what we've done so far, but we know we can get better at acting on it. Uh, and then once we kind of get to that point, then, we're, then we'll kind of move on to the next level in terms of we're bringing in speech analytics, bringing in text mm -hmm. analytics, yep. bringing in other capabilities to help uh, build out that picture. Well, uh, thank you very much. You've given us some insight into what's going on here, and uh, I'm sure that everyone's going to be looking forward to hearing more about those next steps that you just talked about in the future, if you'll be rejoining us in the meantime. I think we will. I hope so. Thank you very much for your thank time. Thank you. Appreciate it.